Thank you so much for being here today. I am violinist Tianxing Cindy Wu. I am very excited to be back performing for the Freer and Sackler Galleries again. I've had fond memories performing with the musicians from Marlboro Tour many years ago, and this time I am back with the New Asia Chamber Music Society. As you know, the Freer and Sackler Galleries together they form the National Museum of Asian Art at the Smithsonian. The New Asia Chamber Music Society specializes in incorporating Eastern elements into this Western tradition of chamber music. All of our musicians are top-notch musicians that perform on major concert stages all over the world. Along with the usual chamber music favorites, we explore and cultivate a wealth of repertoire by Asian composers that has elements like tonality, instruments, and other influences from multiple Asian cultures. And today, we are bringing you a program of this very exciting mix. From Beethoven, of whom we are celebrating his 250th birthday this year, we have a piano trio by one of the most prominent Taiwanese composers, and we have two works that New Asia has commissioned in the past couple years that incorporates erpu, which is the Chinese version of a violin, and we have three Japanese folk song arrangements that coordinates with the current exhibition of Japanese art at Freer. While we can't be with you in person today. We hope you enjoy this very exciting and unique program that the New Asia Chamber Music Society has recorded just for you. Hello, music lovers! Thanks for watching the New Asia Piano Quartet from your home via internet streaming. I wish you all to be well and healthy in the midst of the pandemic. Today, the first piece we are going to play is Beethoven Piano Quartet in E flat major of 16. This piece was transcribed. By Beethoven himself from his quintet for piano and wind instrument, his choice of tonality E flat perfectly characterizes the original wind instruments in tuning and color. The fact that he transcribed from the original version to a different setting might be self-explanatory. Being a rising virtuosic pianist in Vienna, he probably had to use the same material for different concert occasions. This piece was written between 1796 to 1797. As all young people must have their own dreams and ambitions, one of the reasons for Beethoven to move from Bonn to Vienna was to launch his performing and composition career, and to study composition from the famous Joseph Haydn. Beethoven's early compositions bear the mark of Haydn, influence and heritage. We see this in his usage of forms, his treatment and development of motifs, and his experiment with pedals on the new Viennese pianoforte. In a few places in this piece, the piano parts are written with long pedals crossing multiple measures, or with the soft pedal sordino effect, creating specific timbre he wished to achieve. This piece consists of three movements: fast, slow, fast. The fast movement starts with a slow introduction, followed by a triple meter, dance-like, and elegant first theme of sonata allegro. The style and the balance of this movement recalls the tradition of Haydn, symphonic classics. The second movement is a theme and variation presented in B flat major, the dominant key of E flat major. Between each return of the main theme, Beethoven expanded the structure by moving into different tonalities, such as G minor and B flat minor. In this movement, Beethoven did not hide his genuine talent for writing lyrical melodies. The final movement is in six eight. The joyful character sounds like a hunting excursion, and the. Masterful writing of ensemble texture marked this piece an astonishing achievement for his age. By the time Beethoven wrote this piece, which is cataloged as Opus 16, he had already composed his piano concerto number、no. two. By the way, number、no. two was written first, and piano concerto number、no. one, Opus 15, ten piano sonatas, 
including the dramatic revolutionary pathetic sonata opus 13 and four piano trios. Just three years later, he completed the set of six string quartets opus 18 and his groundbreaking symphony number no. one and number no. two. We can see that Beethoven in his early period was already fully equipped with his innovative ideas, his temperament, his fresh spirit, and his dynamic ranges. Well, I guess this is enough talking. How about we hear some performance now?
People say that the most beautiful scenery in Taiwan is the people. Well, I really agree because the people in Taiwan are passionate, welcoming, and they really love to help each other. And you know what? The Taiwan land is just as beautiful as the people. So a long time ago, a bunch of Portuguese sailors, they when they went by Taiwan and they saw the beautiful mountains and then the green trees, and they actually said with excitement, what a beautiful land in Portuguese. And that's what Formosa actually is. So the Formosa Piano Trio by Tyran Xiao, who is one of the most respected composers in Taiwan. Um, this is a beautiful work inspired by some of the Taiwanese original folk songs, um, very well-known folk songs. It is in three sections. It starts with a motif from the folk song, and then you will hear um, a, a more lighthearted version of it in the second section, but then it moves on to a more stormy section um, that are um, minor in minor key in F minor, and then between um, the cello and violin, there's a lot of very exciting exchange, and then it comes back to the first section again. And then um, I think Tyran Xiao really describes so well the beauty of the people the passionate people, and then the beautiful scenery of Taiwan in his music. He's also written lots of works for orchestral um, orchestral arrangement, uh, bigger orchestral works, and choral works, and um, some of the works are um, beautifully written for, for voice and then for solo instruments as well. So I hope you enjoy this work, Formosa Piano Trio by Tyran Xiao.
Chen, and I'm the composer of Flashback Moment. This piece was commissioned, premiered, and recorded by the New Asia Chenda Music Society. There are five short movements in this piece. Each has a distinct character, tempo, and emphasis. However, all movements can trace back to the first movement, um, like a fragrance lingering over or seeds, which may be insignificant in the first movement, but later on these motifs, um, seeds become stronger and have distinct, 
distinct character of their own in the later movements. The most interesting and unusual aspect of this piece, of course, is the inclusion of Chinese ohu. Um, this mixture of East and West ensemble is really a trademark of 21st century we live in today. Finally, I would like to let you know that this piece is dedicated to the New Asia Chamber Music Society. This is a group of very impressive and talented musicians. Um, hope you enjoy the concert tonight. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Ke Jia Chan, the composer for the Unwavering Light. Unwavering Light is a very dear work to me. The word wavering gives a sense of uncertainty. I wrote this piece during the pandemic of 2020. At that moment, the whole world seems to be in a dark place. Undoubtedly, we're still facing the very crisis at this moment. However, Life must continue and will continue. With hope and faith, we will recover and encounter the unwavering light very soon, moving forward to a brighter new world. I hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you.
Kitamura and I'm a composer based in New York currently in Japan visiting my family I made the arrangement for the next three pieces of Japanese folk songs Umi, Sato no Aki, and Chatsumi Umi is about the ocean Umi means the sea as you know Japan is a country surrounded by the sea like Taiwan and this song is about uh, how big the ocean is and wonder how to get to the other side of the ocean which is foreign country. Sato no Aki means autumn in the countryside. Japanese people love seasons like spring, summer, autumn, winter and this song is about the autumn. This boy who is eating chestnuts with his mom waiting for his dad to return home. And Chatsumi Chatsumi means picking tea, tea picking. So this song is about how the tea pickers are out in the field and wearing special straw hats. Um, and you know, they're saying like, let's pick the tea, let's pick the tea. So it's a very exciting song. Hope you enjoy them all. Thank you for including these three songs in the program tonight. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed our program today. Big thanks to the Freer and Sackler Galleries again for having us. We hope to see you soon again.